So Conor McGregor is finally returning to the UFC at UFC 303 in Las Vegas, June 29th. Dana White made the announcement. I was personally expecting the announcement to come during 300. I thought, you know, during the event, McGregor's music would hit, he would walk out, would have Chandler and him facing off in the cage, make a big deal of it, you know? This is the biggest star. But no, uh, Dana decided to just read it out as a bit of an afterthought after UFC 300. June 29th. This guy. Connor versus Chandler. Woo! Five rounds, 170 pounds. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so casual. I mean, let's just contrast his little Connor versus Chandler compared to the way he used to introduce Connor McGregor. The reigning, defending, 155 pound champion of the UFC, <laughs> the notorious Connor McGregor! <laughs> The difference, right? It's stock. And that reflects completely on the way Dana now views Connor. Back then, they were trying to sell the UFC. Connor was their star. Connor was the guy they needed to raise the value of the company in order for him and the Fatita brothers who were selling it to get paid. They don't want Connor McGregor generating a whole load of buzz and inflating his value when he's got two fights left on the deal. If anything, make this as little of a big deal as possible. Yes, Connor's always going to be a big deal, but they're not going to give him any special treatment despite him clearly deserving that. And that's coming from someone, I don't even like the guy that much. I don't really dislike him, to be honest, even though he called us a dickhead. The value he's brought to this company, for them to announce a fight like that, it's just a slap in the face. And even if I'm off base with why Dana is doing this, the bottom line is he is doing it, and he's doing it for a reason. It's certainly not a sign of appreciation for everything McGregor has done for that company. Because in my opinion, they're never ever going to find a way to agree a deal. Conor McGregor and the UFC, because McGregor's name is massive. And they never want to pay for that in the first place, but they really don't want to pay for that when McGregor is physically at the end of his career, coming back off injuries. They know that they're not going to agree a deal. They'd rather McGregor go out with a whimper here. And that's why they're mentioning it in the way they are of McGregor versus Chandler. Like, that's a whimper in itself, isn't it? It's not celebrating the return in the way that you would have thought they would have done, given the star value he has. So the question is now, how good can McGregor actually be after three years out with a broken leg? But not even just that. The level of inner activity McGregor had throughout his career after he hit the heights of winning the back-to-back -back titles. It's insane. So McGregor won his lightweight title in 2016. That's almost eight years ago. He's had four MMA fights in that time. Michael Chandler has had 12 fights in the same time McGregor has had four. And that's without recovering from a broken leg. Obviously, that makes it even worse for McGregor. And I've only got other MMA fighters to look at as to how they recovered from their broken leg and how they came back. And honestly, it doesn't look Look good. Anderson Silva broke his leg in 2013. Now, he was about 40 at the time, so he was getting on, and he was probably going to decline as a fighter anyway. That being said, afterwards, he lost five out of six, and he never looked as good. I mean, Chris Weidman's won one and lost one since his leg break, so, you know, there's some hope. And the thing with McGregor is he does rely on good footwork to set traps, punish people for falling into them, the same way Anderson Silva did. Not exactly, but you know, more like Silva than Weidman. So we've got some training footage that's just been released. Now, the thing about McGregor's training, it never looks intense anymore. Like, I, I never watch his training and think that this is him being pushed to the limit. It's always him in his comfort zone, playing around, having fun, just as he's doing now. This is exactly what we've been saying for the past couple of years. It never looks replicable to a real fight. It's always a nice pace. It's never flat out. And the reason I'm interested in that is because McGregor always had gas tank weaknesses. Always was a problem. But logically, how you build that gas tank up is by doing your cardio. And that's a lot of the legs are involved in a lot of that. We don't know after his cardio issues before were bad, what impact this leg issue is going to have moving forward. And from people who've been interviewed about it, who fought after having leg issues, they've said, you always feel it 10 times worse. Like, like for example, a leg kick in that leg, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be hard for him to take. And if you're Michael Chandler, it's not going to take a genius to tell him, work the fucking leg. I mean, look, it, it, it's good to see him training. He doesn't look bad. But as I said before, the level of intensity is so low and he's so comfortable in there styling on these guys. It doesn't really tell us a great deal. And it's hard to believe with the way McGregor's lifestyle has been in recent years that he is in any way ready to push himself the level that 
Chandler should be pushing himself to. The man who has been dedicated, hasn't had the injuries. So in truth, this should be Michael Chandler's fight to lose. And look, I want to focus on the fighting. I don't want to go on and on about McGregor's drug habit and all of that, because I've touched on that enough now, and the, wo the whole fucking world knows that that's been there. But the reality is, how long ago was it that we were watching this man having significant serious withdrawals shaking and shivering away into his chair during an interview like how do you get over that and then just go into fight camp like th there's got to be some lasting effects there's got to be a level of getting just basic fitness back before you can even go to an elite level athlete so i'll watch michael chandler's last win against tony ferguson but before i do don't forget this weekend ryan garcia versus devin haney use my link in the description below if you want to watch that fight you can watch it on the zone through us which helps the channel out appreciate everyone who does all you fight fans out there helping us keep creating content on the pain game looking at this fight from memory i was quite surprised how decently tony ferguson did and if if you are conor mcgregor and you're watching the way tony despite the massive speed discrepancy manages to time chandler because chandler is undersized and caught chandler and dropped them there like, as much as McGregor should not be able to win this fight because of the leg break, because of the timeout, the octagon, because of the extracurricular activities, Chandler's a fucking tailor-made fight for him. He's not smart. He's short. He's got short arms. McGregor should have the power advantage and the technical advantage. And if he can get himself into decent shape, this is still a very winnable fight. Because Tony Ferguson and I say this uh, reluctantly, is not a good fighter anymore. One time, he was a very good fighter, but even then, on the feet, he was never great. McGregor has been great on the feet, and if Tony Ferguson can land on this bloke, McGregor could shut the lights out. If Chandler is silly enough to play the game of standing and trading with him. Don't be doing no fucking... Max Holloway, if you're Chandler, no fucking way. Yeah, Chandler is tiny for the weight class. What I will say is, what he lacks in size, he makes up for in the heart because he's got the heart of a lion, like he's a fucking nutcase. It, it, it's weird because I, as I'm watching this, I'm imagining the McGregor we once knew in there, dismantling him, butchering him, taking him apart with ease. I mean, old McGregor shuts this guy's lights out within a minute, in my opinion. He's so perfect for McGregor to look good, which is kind of why it feels make or break for McGregor already. Yeah, he's not going to want to give up if he loses the fight, but the reality is, if you can't beat Michael Chandler, then who the fuck do you beat? And, and would they even be worth fighting? Like, because McGregor, you can only fight a certain caliber of fighter in the UFC to make it make sense, like, on a promo level. So they've got to have a name, and if you can't beat a guy like him who's tailor made for you, I don't know who the fuck you do who actually has a name. Aside from getting, dragging people out of retirement which gets a bit embarrassing now this is where Chandler did start to have some success when he hit that takedown and if there's one thing that Dustin Poirier has shown is there's a clear blueprint to beating Conor McGregor and that's fighting him as a mixed martial artist mixing it up I just don't know if Chandler's got the size and strength to bully McGregor the way Dustin did and this was where the fight ended as Chandler stalked Ferguson and hit him with a front kick to the fucking face and i'll tell you what as much as i'm not complimenting in the technical ability of chandler maybe as much as i should do that was superb that was amazing but as good as that was ferguson was getting bullied in that division by most people and chandler did make hard work of it now i'm watching mcgregor now in this third poirier fight and and, and you know you're assuming if you can get back to some level like this i still think this version of mcgregor that i'm watching now beats chandler logically that should be fucking impossible like the level of decline mcgregor should have gone through by now it should be massive he relied on speed heavily back in the day you have to maintain that by training regularly we already know for a fact that the levels that you need to train to he's been physically incapable of doing so because he spent a lot of the three years in a bed recovering from a massive leg break then the other couple of years he's been on the lash there's no fucking way he should be able to recreate even this it's a make break fight for both guys if you're michael chandler if you can't beat a guy who's broken his leg been on the lash for a couple of years and literally not showed anywhere near the level of dedication that you have what else is there to do other than have a few more fights before an inevitable send-off if you're conor mcgregor and you're coming back against michael chandler and you can't beat a guy who's 
really got a big name, but the only big name that really is a tailor-made fight for you right now feels like the easiest possible guy with the biggest name to help you build into another big fight. Who else do you go to then? Because then it starts getting sad. What, you're going to drag fucking Diego Sanchez out of bed? Someone who you can just bully at that point. Like, where do we go from there? So as much as I'm hyped for this fight, it feels like it's a lose-or-leave town moment for both guys. And as amazing as it would be for the UFC and for us content creators, for McGregor to do the amazing and pull it off and knock out Chandler and move on to a huge fight against Max Holloway for the BMF title, or they might even fuck around and find out and put him in a fucking title fight. I wouldn't put it past them. The logical thing that should happen here is that Conor McGregor should get the shit kicked out of him. And it should be a sad, sad moment as we all look at him. And look, we've already had this after Poirier showed he was very much human. But it, it should be worse than that. Because against Poirier, at least he was still a competitive athlete and he hadn't had all this time out. He should look a shadow of himself in this fight. I'll give him major credit if he fucking wins. Like, uh, this will be one of the best comebacks in fight history if he manages it. But I'll be fucking shocked. And I think one of the key factors is going to be the coaching because Conor McGregor needs to be put through the fire before he gets into that cage. Because it's been so long since he's been tested. It's a really tricky thing because if you push him too hard and he hasn't been, you know, training and fighting at this level for so long, it could quite easily result in another injury and we don't even say him make it to the octagon. But on the other hand, if you don't push him enough, he's going to get chinned. And McGregor notoriously, no pun intended, Ended, has been his own man. He's He's been a nightmare to train. He showed up out of shape. There's been a countless amount of excuses. It's been a fuckery for the last 10 years. So I hope to God, for his sake, he puts all of his faith and trust in John Kavanaugh and goes back to being the student and, and, and just totally gives himself to the process and goes, I need you to get me as close as I can get to being ready. Because there's no way he can ever be fully, fully ready when he's been living like he has. But let's see. I'll be very interested to see what happens as training footage starts coming out more more and more and we get an idea of just where is conor mcgregor right now let me know your thoughts in the comments below what you think is going to happen in this fight i can't wait for it it could be the final time so let's enjoy the ride one last time for conor mcgregor versus michael chandler hit that like button don't forget to subscribe to the pain game youtube channel and i'll see you on the next one